Oh, SmackDown Live better than Raw this week. I'll tell you as WGS TV reviews SmackDown Live for the week of January 23rd, 2018. Hey YouTube, are you ready for your hot tag? Because we are, it's definitely time to work. This is Mustang Mike and you're watching WGS TV. Guys, I'm the Russell Game. Welcome back to another episode of WGS TV right here on YouTube.com slash Russell Gamer and on Twitch.tv slash Russell Gamer. Thanks to Twitch's new upload and premiere feature. Be sure you guys check out the Twitch in the description box below. With Raw's less than adequate 25th anniversary show just 24 hours earlier, I went into the show last night with the hopes of actually being entertained, and to an extent, I was. So let's talk about SmackDown Live. <laughs> SmackDown Live opened up this week with the Yep Movement, aka Cami, aka Kevin Owens, and Sami Zayn. They were got a promo on, on, on their upcoming WWE Championship match this Sunday, saying that they were not only going to be the first ever co WWE champions, but after they win, they were going to hurt him. Cami led the crowd in a Yep chant until AJ Styles came out to respond to them basically with the word nope. Owens and Zayn would call Styles manhood in, into question of sorts and would resort to footage of things Styles had said in previous pro promos, including beating them in back-to-back -back matches. Daniel Bryan, who, who, according to my sister, needs a haircut, attempted to advocate for Styles, but was immediately cut off by Styles and accepted Owens and Zayn's challenge. Personal opinion? Not a bad opening for SmackDown Live this week. Three out of five. Opening match this week was Chad Gable taking on Jay, Jay Uso. This was a prelude to the 2 out of 3 falls match this Sunday for the SmackDown Tag Team Championship between these two teams. I know a lot of people view Gable as an underrated talent, but he's really progressed nicely since debuting on the main roster months ago, and what can I say about Jey Uso that hasn't already been said other than his DUI charge he got a couple weeks ago in Texas. The interference from their partners at ringside was expected with the heat between these two teams, as the finish of the match was Gable hitting the rolling German suplex, to on Jay to pick up the win. Personal opinion, 90% of the time when the challenger or challengers go over on the champion on the go home show, then they weren't going to go over on at the pay-per-view, but WWE's chucked that logic out of the window so many times, so I wouldn't be surprised if they did it again this Sunday, but I'll address that in another video. Overall, a nice technical match, three out of five. Backstage, Shinsuke Nakamura was being interviewed about what he was going to do to win the Royal Rumble and his response to quote a former CM Punk shirt, knee to faces. Baron Corbin would appear to say that he didn't care about the fans and that he would keep that they could keep their opinions to themselves as the segment would end with Shinsuke challenging Corbin to a match. Up next it was Naomi taking on Liv Morgan. Didn't I call it last week on the review? Did I or did I not say that this match was coming? I kind of hate it when WWE can get predictable like this. Now, was it a bad match per se? Not really. The match wasn't bad at all. I prefer to be an optimistic when I do reviews instead of a pessimistic as some other reviewers are. I honestly don't have a bad thing to say about this match as the finish of the match is Naomi with a sunset flip pin on Morgan to pick up the win. The SmackDown Women's Division was present at ringside as they turned on one, ano one another, kind of like what Asuka did Monday night after their match. Charlotte Flair would come out to cut a promo saying good luck to the winner and that winner would need need it for their title match. Personal opinion, again I ask, can the build to the match live up to the hype? I guess we'll find out this Sunday, won't we? Three out of five. Up next it was Shinsuke Nakamura taking on Baron Corbin. The match kind of had a slow start to, uh, to it of sorts, felt kind of dry, and but they did pick it up and ran uh, well with it. They've worked to, uh, together w before and had some good matches, so I wasn't surprised to see them pick it up and make the match decent to watch. You gotta love when WWE throws a curveball out of nowhere. Nakamura was setting up for the Kinshasa, the running knee strike, when Randy Orton appeared out of nowhere to and struck with the RKO first to Nakamura and then Corbin. Personal opinion? Did anyone even factor Randy Orton into the equation of this match? I sure didn't. I'm kind of glad WWE threw that curveball the way they did. Orton sure got a pop from the crowd for the RKO's, though. 
3.15 out of 5. Up next, it was a six-man tag team match as the new United States champion Bobby Roode teamed up with the New Day to take on Jinder Mahal and Rusev Day. I don't know if anyone noticed this, but only one of the Singh brothers was out there last night. That's the little things I pick up on. I didn't like New Day's intro on Bobby Roode and the promo they cut about his how his United States Championship reign was going to be exuberant, delicious, I forget the other word, and absolutely glorious. However, it was a short six-man tag team match that kind of screamed time filler to me, but for what it was, it was okay. The finish of the match was Xavier Woods hitting the flying elbow drop on Aiden English to pick up the win. Personal opinion? The more I see it, the more I still don't get it. I'm talking about the pancakes. Three out of five. Up next, it was the first of two matches with AJ Styles as he took on Kevin Owens, but before the match took place, Shane McMahon came out to make a stipulation for both matches that if either one of them interferes in their partner's match, that they would be fired on the spot. Now, for this first match, it wasn't very long, and I believe they did it this way to give Styles and Zayn more time for their match. The finish of the match was Styles locking on the calf crusher on Owens to pick up the win. Personal opinion, again, they did it this way, to not only give Styles more time, but in a sense to, quote, injure Owens as the bell rang, Styles refused to let go of the cash crusher and same and would, again, quote, injure Owens to the point that he needed help at ringside. Zayn attacked Styles before the match, which I felt was necessary for the drama of the main event. Three out of five. The main event of SmackDown Live this week, as I would uh, have already stated, was Sami Zayn taking on AJ Styles. I have to admit, and for once, I agree with something JD from NY206 said on his SmackDown review this week. That Sami Zayn proved why he's a main eventer. And if you could watch this match and not come to the same assessment on Zayn's level of in-ring talent and ability, then I certainly want to know what match you were watching. Zayn and Styles stole the show in my opinion. Owens was being attended to at ringside for the duration of the match basically to keep him there and keep him a relevant part of the match and and as the story of the match. I have to say if this match was any indication of what we could expect um, out of them performance wise then we got one heck of a Smackdown Live main event coming up at the Royal Rumble pay-per-view this Sunday. After knocking Owens around one more one last time it would cost AJ Styles as Zayn would hit the Haluba kick and the and the blue thunder bomb to pick up the win. Personal opinion, Zayn and Styles have had great matches before and this one sure didn't disappoint. 3.75 out of 5. Time for overall score and thoughts. The score of SmackDown Live this week gets a 3.5 out of 5, with best match of the night going to Styles vs. Zayn, and I honestly don't have a pick for worst match or segment this week. Well guys, that's been my thoughts on SmackDown Live this week. What I want to know from you guys out there, the viewers and subscribers, your thoughts on SmackDown Live. What are your overall scores? What are your picks for best and worst match or segment of SmackDown Live this week? Definitely want to hear what you guys have to say. You should put your comments in the comment section below. If you guys like this video, be sure you slam that like button. Like a champ, and if you guys want to see more wrestling talk with awesome gameplays, there are three ways now you can do it. First, for the people here on YouTube, you can leg up the subscribe button and hit that bell icon to turn on notifications. So that way you guys will never miss out another channel right here on YouTube. And if you guys are watching it on Twitch, hit that follow button up there. So that way you will always be up to date for more wrestling talk and awesome gameplays right here on WGS TV. So with that being said, I'm your friendly neighborhood Russell Gamer reminding all of you guys out there to stay awesome. Bye guys!